you know, following on with those comments, uh, I think it's just as important that you know a little bit about me. It's in, just as important that I know a little bit about you so that we can communicate. So if I could just ask uh, a few different questions of, about who's here. First of all, how many people do we have that are developing software applications? Okay. Uh, software tools? Okay. Wow, well, it's a good, good overlap between those. Um, how many people are managing or leading organizations here? Uh, that's a, another good subset. Um, any, anybody that's outside of the software in, industry? No, okay, good. So, kind of tells me where to, where to address here. Um, this talk covers two areas that I've found to be fascinating for most of my life. One is human nature and effectiveness. Uh, you know, how do you release the, the um, potential that each of us has built into us? And then the other is, is how do you make projects and business successful? Uh, a number of years ago when I was writing my, uh, my book on Lean, uh, there was another book that was coming out at the same time. And uh, it, it was posted on the web while it was being written. So I, I, I went there, I looked at it to, to see what the author had to say. And I thought it was interesting. It's a very different angle on it than the one that I was taking. I was coming at Lean from the, the Toyota, uh, you know, manufacturing side, that article was coming at it from the Agile side. And the thesis of that book was that Agile is a synonym of Lean, which I, I found to be a fascinating uh, thesis. So uh, I finished my book, continuing sort of in the, in the vein of the work that I had done. And uh, this is the first time I've actually been asked to speak on the, to compare and contrast Lean and Agile. So uh, this has been a really kind of a, a fascinating uh, uh, journey, you know, to, to get to the philosophical roots of both movements because they started in very different places. You know, Lean came out of the uh, devastation of post-World War II Japan and uh, Toyota was on the verge of bankruptcy as was the whole country. Uh, so that they, they really needed some answers. And then Agile came out of the devastation of software development in the 1990s. So um, they, they do have that in common. They both came out of devastation. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, we're going to go into that. We only have 45 minutes. Uh, my apologies to those of you who like to have lots of details and how-tos. Uh, for you, I am going to give a, a reference at the end of the talk for a, an article that you can get on the web that uh, goes into much more of the details of, of lean software development. So hopefully that will... Uh, uh, hold you over for the next 45 minutes. There we go. All right. Um, I, I'm, I'm very much of the mind that what, whatever we do should have some basis in facts, data, objectivity. So when I was looking a, a, a while back at how well do the various software approaches that have been tried work? You know, because there's been a large number of them over the last 20 or 30 years. You know, the software crisis stimulated a lot of thought and a lot of experimentation. And uh, everybody who is a partisan of, of a method or an approach uh, has great things to say about it. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to try to get an objective basis for comparing them? So I went about trying to find the data, and actually, uh, sometimes you can find the data, and sometimes it's pretty thin. Uh, but you can always find what the people who are advocates of their approaches claim for their approaches. So I thought, well, I'll use as much objective data as I can get, and then I'll use what people claim under the basis that human nature is the same, regardless of what software methodology you choose. And uh, that therefore there's kind of a there's, a, there's definitely a bias in that data, but there's uh, probably a similar bias from one approach to the next. So at least you might get a relative comparison for how well they do. So first of all, I looked at productivity. 
uh, taking as a baseline what sometimes is called ad hoc uh, development. Uh, it, I'll go ahead and give another bar. Uh, we, uh, we have pretty good data on structure development. Structure development came through the IBM work through people like uh, Ed Yorton and um, uh, forget his first name, but Constantine back in the 1970s and the early 80s. And so I'm, I'm setting that as 100%. So before structured development came along, we'll say productivity was 93% of what it was after structured came along. Object orientation came along, and there is actually very good objective uh, evidence that it didn't increase productivity at all. Now, it had some other very good effects. So it's not at all to say anything negative about object-oriented, but the data tells us that it didn't improve the productivity. Uh, shipping software, you know, way uh, far away, um, <clears throat> has not worked out really well. And actually, this data comes from a university study in, in Pakistan. And, it, and it's, uh, again, it's pretty objective data. It, uh, the productivity coming out of uh, outsourced, um, particularly third world outsourced development has, you know, is quite a bit lower. CMMI, there's a little bump in productivity on that. Uh, computer aided software engineering, in other words, tool environments, sort of uh, bigger tool environments, uh, uh, there's a bigger bump from that. Now, Agile was difficult to get good data on. So I, I went to the partisans and uh, writings and kind of averaged them, and I came up with a 25% improvement in productivity. Now, interestingly enough, here just in the last couple of weeks, I, I saw a version one study, and they've sort of taken on the mantle of being the, uh, um, the measurers of agile uh, productivity throughout, uh, throughout the world. And they came up and they said exactly that figure. They said that their, their figures for their latest uh, survey were 25%. So it gave, gave me a good feeling, uh, not only about the accuracy of the figure for Agile, but also of the approach to coming up with these numbers. Reuse has had the best figure on productivity. Uh, the difficulty with reuse is that it only applies in a few domains very stable, long-term kinds of domains like, like banking, so that you tend to end up with software modules that stay the same pretty much year after year. So it's, it's possible to take those and reuse those. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of the, uh, uh, many of the major approaches that have been used to improve software development. Now I'm gonna talk about Lean. Now, this data comes off of, this is vetted data. This is independently gathered through the work that, that we did in the 90s uh, in the early 2000s with Lean. So, now let's look at quality. Again, the differential between ad hoc and structured is uh, 93 to 100. OO, again, um, no direct effect on quality. I think there are some very indirect effects on quality. Geographical distribution is the killer. Uh, made a few recommendations based on that data, actually. Uh, CMMI has a much bigger effect on quality than it has on a productivity. Case, um, pretty good effect. Agile has a pretty good effect. Reuse has a, a pretty good effect. Now again, when you go into the data that we gathered from our lean, and this is Toyota sort of production system based work, what you end up with is that. So the reason is not any brilliance on our part. You know, we just took techniques that have been used elsewhere in, in most other industries. But by applying those, the power of the techniques came out. 